two basins, Adrian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the plunder. Don't die you before I next see you, will you? Well, I'll get you in. <laughs> well, mate, it wasn't, it wasn't me, so I tried. Oh, really? Your ex-wife? Were you trying to get out of there quickly? <laughs> 5th of November, got back last night at uh, about 8 o'clock. So good holiday had by all. And uh, in some respects, it's a shame to be back. Uh, the weather isn't as bad as I thought. The guys are done pff, extraordinary. So when I left, it was 1,829 hectares was left to drill of uh, winter wheat. They've actually took the opportunity to put a little bit more barley in so we didn't have left, any leftover seed. Um, Michael's uh, delighted, as he puts it, to hand over the keys. I told him this morning, I said, I'm not sure I'm ready to pick them up. I need to go through my desk and everything. He says, well, I'll put them down, so it's up to you what you do with them. So I saw the guys this morning in, in, in the yard, and uh, uh, Sandy's on holiday, uh, Simon's on holiday, so um, uh, the, there's less people about, but they're, they're making some progress, and uh, the Ward brothers are uh, still kicking on with the avatars, so that they're doing a great job. And... Um, just going through all the post, and it's, it's amazing the quantity of posts we get, considering that actually post isn't um, anything what it was, but uh, the amount of uh, envelopes and things I seem to be opening today. I haven't even touched the emails. Uh, I did, I did uh, unfortunately, I did ferry through quite a lot of emails while I was on holiday, but um, um, the, the ones that I would look like they were going to upset me, I left. And I'll, I'll look at deal wheeling with them tomorrow. But uh, so uh, I had a count up this morning, assuming they get a couple of headlands finished this, what they were doing it this morning. We've got 138 hectares left. So starting with 1,829 when I went away, that is some achievement. So uh, Cousin Michael has excelled and the team have excelled. And uh, I think it's something to be proud of that uh, they've basically they've knocked out uh, nearly 1,700 hectares worth of um, um, drilling in the last week and, and, and weekend. So uh, making good progress down to sort of seven fields left. Um, so hopefully by tomorrow night, if not Thursday morning, all will be drilled. And then just a couple of um, catch up bits I've got to do, which uh, I think there's some areas we're going to have to wait until there's a frost and do, or we're going to have to sort of abandon until uh, next year. But uh, the conditions actually, w w I haven't been out to inspect yet, but from what Michael tells me, actually the conditions have gone in well. The guys are in high spirits, said that they were pleased with how the drilling had gone so far. It wasn't mauled in, wasn't, wasn't uh, done badly, um, looks well. And, um, you know, Kieran's got all the spraying done in front, the spraying off. Uh, Glenn's currently on a sprayer doing pre-em work as well as um, Kieran as well. So they're turning around now and pre-emming. So um, got ourselves in a good position and... Um, other people will be taking holidays at the end of the week, so that would be good. And uh, I, I feel refreshed and raring to go and uh, pleased to have had a, had a good break and catching up with what's been going on. I've been about to see what Father's House is doing, how the new shed's doing. We'll go and have a look at all that again. And um, just uh, I, opening one of the parcels, and DMJ Drainage just sent me an introduction box and uh, said that the father, who's the MD, is an added watcher. And anyway, going through the box, and very, very kind of you to, to, to think of me and send this to me. But anyway, one of the things that uh, I got was this very nice uh, Diet Coke uh, thing in this, this holder, which I think I'll keep on my desk as like my emergency. Uh, um, or to, as when I used to smoke, I always used to keep one in the packet as my uh, driving home cigarette. But anyway, oh. it's a can of Diet Coke, and it says, uh, by James, which I think is fantastic. Normally my Diet Coat's got Kate on the front, but uh, th this one is, is by James, so really, really pleased. In fact, I think I'm almost going to have a job to drink it. I like it so much, but uh, there we go. So I can keep that on my desk as my emergency supply. And when things are getting tricky, I'm judging by the pile, I think. And then there are other things in here. Um, there's a nice bottle of uh, uh, wine in a cup and some pens, Parker pens and uh, normal pens and, and, and a ruler. Actually, the ruler's quite handy because it's got, it's got the different measurements on it. But anyway, ever so grateful for that. And that, that was a very kind thought. And uh, so uh, thank you. So anyway, going through, um, what time is it now? 11 o'clock. So I've been in here about five hours now, I think it is, and uh, knocking out some, um, knocking out some, some paperwork. And I've uh, got a talk tomorrow to give um, to the Mid-Sussex uh, farmers, uh, give a talk down there on the business. 
and then uh, more, more catch up this week on, on getting stuff done. And we've got uh, the mustard campaign starts today. So we now just had some loads come in from some farmers and we're starting to now um, analyze those and work out what's got to be cleaned, not cleaned, etc., and what the process is. So uh, got a new uh, chat from Connormentum came today, t Toby, and he's going to be looking at the, you know, our results and comparing them to his results, etc., and passing them. So yeah, the mustard campaign, hopefully will take the next four weeks. We'll do all the white and then the brown. And uh, Gordon's back from holiday. And Gordon being a Scotsman, I've never seen him with a suntan. He's normally pale, but I actually had to take a picture of him today because he's so brown, which is unusual for Gordon. He normally goes uh, red and then white, but he's actually got a, got a tan. He tells me he's a changed man and uh, he knows how to get a suntan now. So, uh, yeah. Don't, don't try and hide away. <laughs> so this is Norman. So Norman came here in 2005, that's right, isn't it? Yes. As our first lorry driver. Yes. On, uh, I had an old Scania 420, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, was it J1 from the beginning? No, I think, I think. Um, Did you have a normal reg? And then yeah. I got. Then you changed them, didn't you? Fairly sharpish. <laughs> yeah. So you came up, the first day you came, it broke down, didn't it? Yeah. Going down the Stone A14 <laughs> Stone Market, the fan belt went. That's right. And, uh, and something else happened, I think, as well. But. Um, like you came about because Chris, who was delivering Wyvern Oil, um, yes. he said, I, I've got a pal that drives yes. lorries. Yes, that's right. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so you came and drove the first lorry, and that was 2005. So what are we? We're not quite 20 years, are we? No. And you retired last year. Six, I had 16 years. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you said, can't you make it 20? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just did tell you, didn't I, that Donald Trump's 78, so you've, you've given up early. But uh, was it last year, Norman? No, I... Was... Is it two years now? It, can't, it must have been more than 16 years. No, it was. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um... Anyway, he only turns up to let me know he hasn't died. Don't you? Well, you always ask. Yeah, I do, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I was just, I was just going to walk around. We're building a new shed. Yeah, I was So when that. you first came here, none of this existed, did no, it? nothing. And none of this existed. You had and, and, and there was you used to drive around the old shed to a weighbridge on the side. Yeah. In a little wooden um, garden shed. And this place was an old caravan. That's right, yeah. And when you come down the first gate, yeah. Then you turn, then you have one way bridge. Yeah. With a little hut. Yeah. Just to manage to get in. Yeah. And you could just swing round the back and come back round on yeah. yourself, yeah. And then you had the big one built, didn't you? Yeah. That's Aberdeen. Yeah. And yeah. then you had this one. Yeah. And now I'm building a shed for the machinery, finally. That's I the... see that when I come. I weren't sure what it was for, but I know you were talking about it quite a while ago. Yeah, my shed, need, shed of dreams. Needed something to put all your implements in. Yeah, yeah. yeah I understand that. Yeah, I yeah. do. Well, you know, they're always all over the countryside in all these sheds I rent of farmers. Yeah. So we're going to be trying to build something. Oh, that's good. So, yeah. Yeah, that's improved since I first come here. Yeah. Well, there weren't much here, was there? There was nothing. <laughs> but, whew. What was the harvest volume? Not bad? Down. Was it down? Yeah, 20 to 30 percent, depending on the crop. Yeah. Because we had some decent weather at times, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. The harvest, in that sense, was okay. Yeah. No, we flew. We finished by the 23rd of August. Combining. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went like the wind. No, we, the, the, no in that sense. Down? No, because of four new combines. Yeah, but they didn't, you, but you could always have trouble. No, they were, they were excellent, they were excellent. Yeah, yeah they, had, they had their, you know, moments, but well, of course they nothing did. like we've had it before. Oh, no. no. No, they've done well. No. Right, well, I'm going to go see this building. I do look at it. Don't, yeah, don't do die before I next see you, will you? Well, I'll get you in. <laughs> so now the, the frame is up, one for a better word, and you've now got the, the purlings gone in really starting to take shape. You can actually sort of picture how it's going to look. It's not fully completed. It goes right to the very back. But uh, you can see now the outline of where the roller doors are going. So here for the drive in for the uh, spray store and drive out. And then there's a um, six meter bay closed off. And then the next one down is where the um, uh, drive through. That's sort of in mind within the future if I want to turn it into a workshop. I have the workshop at the first section. And then um, 
laterally, then have all the machinery in line up and down the shed, and then the they'll go up and down to do the winter servicing, etc., throughout the shed. Obviously, with the drilling, we've got, I suppose, we've got about a, a couple of days until we finish. And then Chris, who's currently on father's house, he'll he'll get back to this and start making making some inroads to this and starting planning for concrete and etc. These guys have got to get this all netted up and get the roof on. But uh, it's good to see a bit of progress. Really start now the frame's sort of up in a sense. You can really start to see how it's going to look. So SNA uh, main man's going to come and see me on Thursday, I believe. So. Um, yeah, they're making some uh, some inroads, and uh, we look, once you start to get the concrete panels in, and then start to get the roof on, then you really start to see it as a shed. So just it's in a skeleton process. But even looking out across the yards, you can see, you know, how much drier it is. And when I was here before I went on holiday, the, the you know, it, obviously it's still a bit tacky out there, but nothing like it was. I mean, it was a complete wash everywhere. And even though I've been away and it's been 34 degrees where I've been and come back here, it's actually relatively pleasant. So, sort of noticed earlier my telephone, I thought it's awfully quiet. Everybody still thinks I must be away and I realised I had it on the uh, focus of uh, do not disturb and the reason I wasn't getting any phone calls was that nobody could actually get through. So uh, the phone's been blissfully quiet all day, which has meant I've been able to get a lot done. So we're emptying one of the stores now um, barley's going out and um, so that, that's going out of that store and then um, <clears throat> starting to see stores will get rotated and refilled panels are in for the shed so that the, just can't wait to see that whole yard all redone it makes such a difference and then I get the combine headers in, get the combines washed, get them put in. So the extraction fan's been installed. So that when they're welding hard facing in particular, all the gas is coming off and it's not a healthy environment for uh, people to be, even though we might do it outside and have the doors open or whatever, but when we were hard facing this last year, we realized you know, it wasn't ideal. So part of the NFU report for the health and safety was that they recommended putting in an extraction system. So they put that in so we can weld below and then up top. Mezzamine of dreams isn't looking so mezzamine of dreams currently. Pete must be quite distraught, but uh, there's the fan for the extraction. And then that's gonna go Table goes down, so there must be a switch, and then that then goes outside. Are you sure you haven't dyed your hair? Twice I've looked at it. Yeah. Twice I think it's changed colour. Has it? Yeah. Oh, I haven't dyed my hair. Are you so sure? Are you sure, Dave? You haven't. It's stress related. Is it? Yeah, probably it goes yeah. back. We're not one of them creatures that change colour. Yeah. Check out. Yes. I'm well, sure it was ginger last week. <laughs> this door is, I don't know, it's supposed to be like 150 years old. Came out of a my grandfather, he went on a, bought doors and things that came out of houses they were taking down because of the cost of them. And uh, so he had some doors, so this is one of them. And they're making it fit just because we thought it was a nice thing to do. Um, so they're making, it doesn't look so good on this side. But anyway, this is the original part of the house and obviously that's the extension. And then they're gonna just, um, these bricks here, these are soft, <coughs> so the, the field at the back there is called Brickyard, and they used to make the bricks out of the clay, and then a lot of the buildings all here, the original buildings, I think this house is something along the lines of 1830, and then you've got the other houses, the buildings and things there, which were later on, um, and the bricks all came out of the field, so uh, you why a lot of some of these properties are rendered because actually they they're not weathering so well. But anyway, they're going to take that out and just make that into a bit more of a um, double doors opening out, redoing some of the windows which have we've put in now since uh, I had them put in when I did this house up originally in 2000 in the year year 2000. The radiators are actually on, which is nice. It's quite warm in here, so he's got his shower and. 
two basins, Adrian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they've plumbed up. So, yeah, it's coming nice for him. He's quite pleased. I saw him earlier. Now they've started to paint it. And it's, it's a colour not dissimilar to what my house is. Mine's actually lime render. So we try to copy the sort of the, the colour. It was, you can see the chimney stacks up there. It was that colour. So um, it's, it's, a, it's fresher. Father's happy with it, so. And then obviously there's a garage door to come in here, which has got to come off my house to go there. And we've got a big tidy up to do around here because this is, um, yeah, not ideal. It's amazing how much generation of waste we do. And waste is something I've currently got a little project on the moment because we've got so many um, tum bags, plastic containers, etc. So looking at a baling machine where we can pour the stuff in and just keep baling it up and then sell the plastic and sell the bags, etc. And sell the cardboard because we, you know, are, we're spending nearly 12,000 a year currently on um, getting rid of um, waste that's been generated um, from basically deliveries coming in. And we're hoping we can turn that round into a more of a positive income that will be great enough to pay for the machinery to do it as opposed to this wasted cost of sending stuff out to landfill because we can't burn anything anymore. Years ago, farmers had just burnt it. They'd been gone, that had been done. Now, I mean, think of that £12,000, all those lorry movements to get rid of waste. It's extraordinary. So this is Churchfield, the one I was rattling myself to death over. And uh, as Michael said, with the time I go away and come back, it will look much better. And, and to be fair, yes, you can see a couple of patches in here, but on the whole, I'd say that's filling in quite nicely. And it's a lot better than I thought it would be. I mean, there's still a couple of bits here, which are not, not as I'd hoped, but um, you can actually do more damage sometimes fiddling about with it than you can leaving it. So... Uh, I think the Avatar direct drill would be the only thing to try and slot into it. But it's what the turning would be like for the machine on it. So I had to put a bit of slug pellets on it. I'm really impressed with the uh, Hilux. Uh, I think it's for us. We're, we're, I've told Joe that, yeah, it's for us. So he's on holiday, so sort it out with him when he gets back. But uh, I like the concept. I'm happy with the concept. I was, I was anxious about the quad bike. Um, I couldn't quite settle myself on it due to the theft and the, the safety of them, etc. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with the Hilux concept. Hello, Hello, Cousin Michael. Hello, how are you? I'm just thinking, Michael, for, as you've done such a wonderful job in my absence, but um, I'm now looking at Thomas Cook brochures and whether, where I should go next. Why, are you coming with me? Obviously, you'll be taking me as payment. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking Australia. Is this a good time to tell you that I backed into someone in one of your pickups the other day? Oh, you didn't. <laughs> are you being serious? Well, I didn't mean to. Well, who, who, who was the other person? Oh, I don't know. She was lovely, though. She was very understanding. But hold on a second. Isn't it if people drive into the back of you that it's their fault, as opposed to... Uh, are you sure you... Uh, Oh. So what does that mean now? I'm going to be getting one of those peculiar letters. <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sort it, don't worry. I just thought I'd tell you. It hasn't damaged the pickup at all, though, don't worry. <laughs> Which, it obviously wasn't the Izuzu. Oh, no, it's the, the J22. Oh, right, yeah. Did you really back into somebody? Well, I didn't mean to. Did you really? Yeah. And, and, can, and just to be clear, this wasn't somebody that you were related to, like Sam, was it? Were you trying to get a new Audi car out of me? Well, no, it wasn't. It was on my ex-wife's drive. Oh, really? Your ex-wife? Were you trying to get out of there quickly? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd better get that in while I was still in my honeymoon period. Oh, God. Oh, right. So, basically, I'm ringing to praise you, and now you're actually, now it's going to start creeping out... Is it going to be one of those situations where each day I'm going to get told 
Oh, by the way, I put barley in the wheat drill. Or, um, So hold on a second. Did, did you just go into a tar dealer, car dealership and say, uh, Michael Dunworth PX Farm? Is that what you're saying? Oh, no, 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 no. I just rang Abby Tyres. They came to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that time, Michael, that I had a broken collarbone and X number of ribs and I was in a bit of difficulty and we went to look at some trailers down in Herefordshire and I got a puncture in my car. And you refused to get out and change the wheel. And we had to ring um, RAC while we went in the local, local restaurant and had a meal. <laughs> well, that's what made me think that you'd probably understand me just ringing Abby Tyres and putting it to you. I do, yeah. Yeah, I've been there before with you. <laughs> oh, well, well, thank you anyway. No, those, are, those are the only two, uh, only two incidents that I can think of that I need to mention. What, for today? Well, there's only 138 hectares, as of this morning, left to do. That's oh, brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, so give us um, a day or two and that could be done. And, um, cool, first time, Michael, in a long time, we actually had a winter. Do you think about it? We were, we were doing sugar beet, weren't we? Then we were doing potatoes. So that went on forever. Then last year was just dreadful. And uh, this year was starting to be dreadful. And, uh, I mean, we shouldn't count on chickens until it happens, but... Um, and actually, I think the good thing is, Michael, we, we didn't result in um, throwing it on and tying it in or anything. We did actually drill it all, and we're actually quite pleased that, OK, we've got some corners and a couple of headlands, but... Yeah, but I, I've had a good look down recently in the last couple of days. Well, not this your farm, but, but where we've been really forcing it, and we've been thinking, oh, my God, is this the right thing to do? It's been dry ever since, and actually, they're coming really, really nicely. I've mm. got... Mm, we're yeah. actually, the potential in the crop is, is, is there. There's mm. no reason why there shouldn't be good crops. Mm. Whereas last year, we were mauling them in, it never stopped raining, and they never were good crops. Right the well, it never stopped raining. I think that's the key point. Yeah. But, yeah. So. Oh, well, I no doubt you'll let me know what my uh, punishment's going to be for this last week. Well, when we finish drilling, we're going to go for a triumphant meal at the... Uh, are we go oh, where are we going, Michael? In the dining room or in the garden room? Yeah, I thought, thought so. I've got to get my tie out. Do you need, I, well, I must just tell you on that, Michael. Um, I got on the scales this morning. And bear in mind that before all this, I was at 14.12. Something like that, 14, 12. I was quite pleased with myself. Anyway, I got on the scales this morning. I was on um, 15, 13. Oh, dear. Exactly two stones ahead of me. Depending on which way you look at it. I've had, noth I've had nothing to eat today to celebrate, though, Michael, because I think I've got so much food in me from Dubai. I mean, you, you have breakfast, and that's substantial. You then get a little snack, and then you have lunch, and that's three course. And then you have dinner, and then that's three course. So, um, you, you, you couldn't make it sound as if they force feed. They did force feed me. Oh. Yeah, I didn't even want to go to lunch, but I was forced to go to lunch. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, if we'd yeah. finished, if we if we'd finished on the fifth of October, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have noticed I wasn't here. Getting tired now, so I'm going to sign off and uh, got to go to Mid Sussex tomorrow. So that's two and a bit hours driving, and then give a talk there, get back. Then we've got the Worship Company of Farmers, uh, New Masters dinner in Cambridge. So uh, the guys will crack on and get the drilling done, and then fingers crossed, maybe tomorrow, maybe, maybe Thursday morning, uh, job done. Get everything back, get everything cleaned down, get a big clean down, and start at least Glyn and. Um, Kieran and Sandy and Graham can get on with spraying and pre-emming and etc. and get some of the post-ems on. So um, still a bit of work to do and then some of the guys will catch up with some holidays, the ones who haven't had any yet. And uh, it'd be nice to finally have a winter and then I can 
start reflecting on uh, Rachel Reeves' uh, budget uh, that came out uh, while I was away. I'm going to try and get the uh, accountant and advisors here around the table and have a bit of a session on it, um, see what we can pull together, which is in particular for our business and, and what might be the case on a wider. Uh, make a call later today, see if I can do that for next week. But I think that um, this is fundamentally, we've got some major changes ahead of the farming, and we've been going through major changes with the BPS uh, gone away, and now with the greater reduction happened, which I think is just, there's so many things that came out in that budget, which the APR is currently at the, the main front, but actually there are many other things hidden behind, which I think are also very detrimental to today's agriculture, not the future. And um, oh, just extraordinary. The, the, the value of what we, what we do, do, that is the issue. We're not valued, just not valued. Um, and I think the common part that farming will come out with now is what is the point? Because if people were to sell up and put the money in the bank, the money they would earn would be more money than they would ever receive through farming in their lifetime. So actually, you're getting to a stage, I think families will start to say, what is the point? And that's a dangerous place for society to get to. Anyway, thanks ever so much. Uh, and you know, thanks to all the guys. Thanks to Michael. Thanks to everybody that helped uh, while I had a holiday. And I'm so grateful that uh, I was given that time with my children, the family. And um, let's see what uh, towards the end of end of the week brings. Hopefully next episode I can uh, raise my arms with joy that we've finished.